May I first invite uh, the Singapore journalist, Ms Dawn Tan from National Broadcaster Media Corp. Dawn, please. Dawn, Dawn Tan, CNA Media Corp. Good afternoon, Prime Minister and Madam Vice President. And may I, on behalf of all Singaporeans, also welcome you to our home here in Singapore. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister, as well for that update on Singapore-US bilateral relations and for the constructive role that the United States continues to play in this region. Uh, permit me to begin by asking both of you a question. Prime Minister, as we speak, a complex operation continues in Afghanistan as the US stands by its commitments there. How will Singapore, as an important bilateral partner, work with the United States as it completes its mission in Afghanistan? And Madam Vice President, what's your message to America's partners about U.S. commitment to its longtime allies in light of this issue? I'll go first. Well, countries all over the region, and I'm sure all over the world, are watching developments in Afghanistan very closely. Foremost in everybody's minds is the safety and security of the civilians, and I hope all sides will work to ensure this. Singapore is not unfamiliar with the challenges the SAF, the Singapore Armed Forces, deployed personnel to Afghanistan in support of ISAF, the International Security Assistance Force. We also sent provincial reconstruction teams to support the Afghan people in their reconstruction of the country. We did so because Afghanistan was a key battlefront in the global fight against extremist terrorism. Extremist ideas and capabilities were exported from there all, our re all over our region. And they pose a security threat to Singapore too. The Jamaa Islamia group, for example, had direct links to Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. The Biden administration inherited an extremely difficult situation. The US had invested considerable blood and treasure in Afghanistan but it was an intractable task given the complex history, geography, and tribal rivalries of the place. Successive US presidents have declared their resolve to withdraw from Afghanistan. So I told the Vice President that we understand President Biden's reasons for his decision. The US intervention has stopped terrorist groups from using Afghanistan as a safe base for 20 years. For this, Singapore is grateful. We hope Afghanistan does not become an epicenter for terrorism again. And post-Afghanistan in the longer term, what matters is how the US repositions itself in the Asia-Pacific, engages the broader region, and continues the fight against terrorism, because that will determine the perceptions of the countries of the US global priorities and of its strategic intentions. And specifically on the current withdrawal uh, evacuation operation, as I mentioned just now, Singapore would be happy to offer our Air Force Airbus A330 to assist in the evacuation operation. Therefore, I welcome the Vice President's visit here, as well as her reassurances on American intentions in the region and in the world. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, and that is exactly the point. The reason I am here is because the United States is a global leader. And we take that role seriously, understanding that we have many interests and priorities around the world. I am here in Singapore as a reaffirmation of our commitment to our membership in the Indo-Pacific region, our partnership, long-standing partnerships with Southeast Asia, and a long-standing relationship with Singapore as it relates to our issues and our mutual issues on security and economic strength and development, and now increasingly global health. So this visit, combined with the agreements we have made and the work we continue to do as a nation, to reinforce our commitment to these relationships speak, I believe, volumes 
in terms of the integrity of the relationships that the United States has around the world on many issues based on our shared priorities and our shared vision of not only the challenges we face, but the future and the potential based on the opportunities that this moment also presents. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Over Thank you. To Thank you. Our first question will come from American journalist Nandita Bose from Reuters. Nandita. Thank you, Simone. Um, Madam Vice President, we're in a situation where Afghans have been trampled, uh, died as they rushed to flee a nation where Americans fought for 20 years. American citizens are still stuck without safe passage. I understand that you agree with the decision to withdraw, uh, but in your assessment, what went wrong with the withdrawal? And I have a question for the Prime Minister as well. Uh, we understand you have offered help with evacuations, sir, but does the fall of Afghanistan 20 years after the U.S. started military operations there to drive out the Taliban, does that change your calculus? and on how you can rely on America as a partner in this region, both militarily and economically. Does that impact the credibility of America's foreign policy promises? So I, I, I understand and appreciate why you asked the question. And um, I think there's going to be plenty of time to analyze what has happened and what has taken place in the context of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. But right now, we are singularly focused on evacuating American citizens, Afghans who worked with us, and Afghans who are vulnerable, including women and children. And that is our singular focus at this time, understanding that we have a priority in making sure that the people that in particular, helped America achieve its responsibilities in terms of our priorities and the reason we went to Afghanistan in the first place, that we have a responsibility and we feel a deep commitment to making sure that folks who helped us are safe. But there's no question that what many of us have seen on television, as the President has said, I mean, the President has, I think, shown great emotion in, in expressing um, sadness about some of the images we have seen. But we cannot be um, in any way um, distracted in any way from what must be our primary mission right now, which is evacuating people from that region who, who deserve to be evacuated. I think I already addressed the point you raised in my earlier remarks, because uh, we are watching what's happening in Afghanistan on the TV screens today. But what will influence perceptions of U.S. resolve and commitment to the region will be what the U.S. does going forward, how it repositions itself in the region, how it engages its broad range of friends and partners and allies in the region, and how it continues the fight against terrorism. Countries make calculations and take positions, and they have to make recalculations and adjust their positions from time to time. Sometimes it can be done smoothly. Sometimes there are hiccups. Sometimes there's things go awry and take time to put right. But countries remain with long-term interests, with long-term partners, and is the mark of a country which can succeed that it takes these interests and partners seriously and in a dispassionate way and maintains them over the long term. And the U.S. has been in the region since the war, 19, which is more than 70 years ago. There have been ups and downs. There have been difficult moments. There have also been, uh, over decades, dramatic transformations in Asia wrought by the benign and constructive influence of the United States as a regional guarantor of security and support of prosperity. And 
Singapore hopes and works on the basis that the US will continue to play that role and continue to engage the region for many more years to come. Thank you, Nandita. The US delegation's next question will come from American journalist Zolan Kano Youngs of the New York Times. Zolan? Yes, thank you so much uh, for taking my question here. Um, Madam Vice President, a quick follow up to my colleague's question. I understand what the focus is now, but given that the reality is that there are thousands of allies as well as American citizens that are still stuck in limbo, are you satisfied with the operational steps that were taken in this decision? Not the decision it's itself, but the operational steps that were taken. Does it meet your standard? Secondly, China is already trying to use the situation in Afghanistan to drive a wedge between the U.S. and its allies, telling those in the South China Sea region that the U.S. cannot be counted on as a reliable long-term partner. Are you at all concerned the damage has already been done to U.S. credibility worldwide? And how does the U.S. and specifically the administration repair it? And then for Prime Minister Lee, your country's travel restrictions are a major strain on American businesses, businesses worldwide. Since Singapore has said that it wants to expand quarantine-free travel, what are the specific conditions it would take to get a quarantine-free arrangement in the U.S. and high vaccination countries like it? Thank you. So I'll repeat what I said, um, which is that there's no question there will be and should be a robust analysis of what has happened. But right now, there is no question that our focus has to be on evacuating American citizens, Afghans who worked with us, and vulnerable Afghans, including women and children. That has to be our primary focus and where we are placing our attention on the issue of Afghanistan. And to that end, we have seen a successful drawdown of the embassy, and thankfully, without any American casualties. We have seen thousands of people who have been, who have been evacuated from the airport in Afghanistan, where the United States military, doing very hard and difficult work, were able to contain that airport so that we could successfully evacuate the people who have been evacuated so far. So as the president has said, listen, this is a difficult mission. There's no question about that. But our focus has to be on the task at hand. As it relates to America's relationship around the world, I am standing here in Singapore because of our commitment to a longstanding relationship, which is an enduring relationship with the Indo-Pacific region, with Southeast Asian countries, and in particular, with Singapore. The agreements that the Prime Minister and I have reached today are evidence of that enduring relationship and commitment, and founded on the longstanding priorities that relate to our security interests and our economic issues, but also a commitment going forward as it relates to the challenges that we faced in the 21st century and the challenges we are going to face moving forward, such as in the inevitable, which is future pandemics and what we will do together to research and to do what we can to stop those pandemics from wreaking the kind of havoc on the world that COVID has. A commitment moving forward to work together on the issue of cybersecurity, to work together on the issue of the climate crisis. All of these agreements are evidence of America's strength and enduring relationships around the globe, and in particular, our knowledge that as we move forward and think about where we go in the 21st century, Southeast Asia and the Indo-Pacific will in large part, I believe, dictate the future of our world and America's commitment then and partnerships with the country in this region and the countries in this region are about where we are going and also founded on the relationships that we have had in this region. Okay, on vaccines, this is something which I also discussed with the Vice President. Uh, as countries get more vaccinated, as protocols are worked out, as we get COVID infections under control, it's easier for us to open up. We have been very tight on our borders for some time. 
because it was necessary and we had to get our situation in Singapore secured through vaccinations and through infections control. I think we are getting there, but we are nowhere near herd immunity. And we are now able to contemplate um, vaccinated, safe, quarantine-free travel with conditions and tests and procedures with countries. And we are starting with two countries, uh, Germany and Brunei. And we are talking about other countries as well, and it will depend on the vaccination progress in those countries. It will depend on the um, prevalence of COVID in those countries, the state of the pandemic. And it depends what we can work out between us so that you have confidence in pre-departure testing, pre-departure vaccination certificates, and then procedures upon arrival to be tested and, if necessary, uh, to be quarantined if, inf if infected. It's something which we have strongly in mind because it's important for Singapore as a hub to be able to reopen and to operate safely and for people to travel back and forth to do business and to keep ourselves connected with the world. And the U.S. is one of the countries which we will be pursuing these conversations with. Thank you, Zolan. Thank you. Now the last question from Singapore journalist, Ms. Lynette Lai from the Singapore Press Holdings. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to bring the discussion back to the region and ask PM Lee and Vice President Harris um, how the US can work with Singapore and other partners to contribute to the broader stability and security of the region and also to strengthen people-to-people -people ties. Thank you. Well, I think the economic cooperation is an important part of that because that gives substance to the rest of the cooperation. And I listed out some of the areas which we are embarking on further projects with the U.S. Um, arising from the Vice President's visit. On the security cooperation, that's also very close. Uh, it ranges all the way from defense cooperation to intelligence exchange to uh, counterterrorism activities to cybersecurity. And there, too, we have an agenda. And thirdly, on people-to-people -people ties, um, travel is one big part of it. Um, studying, students studying is a big part of it. We have very many students from Singapore and, in fact, from all over the region uh, who study in the U.S. I spent a couple of years in the U.S. myself, and you never forget the experience and the friends which you have made. And these are things which ought to continue Afghanistan or not, COVID or not. And I'm quite confident that they will continue and they will grow and we will be able to deepen the ties across the Pacific for many more years to come. The Prime Minister has said it well, which is this is a relationship that is based on uh, shared vision, both in terms of the challenges we face but also the opportunities that we face to work together to meet those challenges. And it, it relates, again, to the historic relationship that we have on the issue of security and economic um, strength. But it is, it is also about what we can do to work together to discover the, 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 the medicines that might attack and, and deal with the next virus. It is about the, the, the future in terms of our mutual commitment, curiosity, and interest in what, what we can do in space. It is about what we have in terms of shared values for the need for universal norms on the issue of cybersecurity. Uh, it is about the interest that we have in being a global partner on the issue of, 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 of vaccines, for example, and our shared commitment, understanding that when we have the resources, that we will share them with the world. These are the things that Singapore and the United States have in common. And with that common purpose and with a similar approach to our responsibility for our own citizens and our responsibility as a global citizen, I believe that with this commitment, as evidenced again by this visit today, we will continue to partner in a way that benefits not only Singaporeans and Americans, but the rest of the world. Thank you, Madam Vice President. And with that, I bring the joint press conference now to a close. Thank you, journalists, for joining us and everyone online. Thank you.